Jason 3. Hey, at the uh, 54 westbound ramp to Ellis Boulevard, there is a Mazda 6. It's maroon in color. You need to go to Heritage Highway. I believe it's right on the ramp. A lady had left, but I asked her to go back. Hi, I'm Don Archer. Welcome to the Tow Channel, where we break down the complex business of towing into small bite-sized pieces that you can consume at your leisure. You can contact me on Twitter at twitter.com slash tow channel. Today we're going to talk about dispatching. From small operations to large, dispatching is a job that shouldn't be taken lightly. Unfortunately, most towers have little respect for their dispatcher. As one tower put it, we do more work in one hour than they do all week. They're always sitting in the office drinking coffee while we're out in the weather working our asses off. That's my opinion. Dispatching is easy. Well, I'm calling bullshit on that one. Sorry mom, cussed again, but it's bullshit. Just sit in their chair one day and you'll be glad to be back out on the road. Sure, drivers are on the front lines when it comes to dealing face to face with a customer, but who do you think gets the phone call when you screw up? Yeah, the dispatcher. Besides, you're only required to do one call at a time. Do you see these phones? There's four of them, and I've got two hands. <laughs> Dispatching is not for the weak-minded. You must have the ability to juggle many things at one time. You've got the phones, of course, but then you've got the fax machine and the email and the two-way radio to deal with, and drivers calling back three times asking what color was that car. Then there's the customer who needs a copy of an invoice from 1987 and the incessant telemarketing calls selling software, advertising, financing, and cruises to exotic destinations. And you know a cruise I could use. A dispatcher must decipher motor club calls and callers with language barriers, stranded motorists who are directionally challenged, the passing motorist calling in for someone else, drivers who are directionally challenged, the customer who's been waiting 17 minutes and a tow truck still hasn't arrived. Dispatchers must do all this while giving drivers the correct information needed to complete their jobs while ensuring that there's always at least one driver available for an emergency. Granted, there are times when we do sit and enjoy a nice cup of coffee while shooting a game of pool in the dispatcher's lounge. Dispatching is hard work that would make a 200 pound tow truck driver cry like a little girl when things got crazy. I've been on both sides of this argument and understand that drivers believe dispatchers care nothing about the troubles they encounter. It's their job to get all the information, uh, where the vehicle's at, what color it is, what's wrong with the vehicle and who's paying for it. We need all those things in order to do our job. I'd like to see dispatchers go on the road with us. And yes, there are some dispatchers who don't ask enough questions or relay the appropriate information. Sometimes they're too busy taking care of important office stuff. But to fully understand this, you need to put yourself in the place of the dispatcher. Why would a dispatcher not want to provide as much information as needed? During busy times, they'll want to get the calls dispatched and completed as quickly as possible, and providing the proper information will get calls completed to free up drivers. A good dispatcher should always provide location, service requested, type of vehicle including year, make, model, as well as color, tow destination if appropriate, the party responsible for paying for the service, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, reason for the tow, whether or not there will be someone with the vehicle, and any other appropriate details available. The two areas where the most confusion and consternation come into play between tow truck driver and dispatcher are location and two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Location. If the vehicle isn't where the dispatcher said it was, the driver may assume that the mistake was the dispatcher's failure to ask the right questions when it could have easily been a confused motorist. Two or four wheel drive. A wrecker may be sent to dolly tow a four wheel drive because a flatbed isn't available. And the tow truck driver may assume that the dispatcher either doesn't know what they are doing or that they have a personal vendetta against the driver when the reality is that there are four calls for flatbeds stacked up and waiting. It's the responsibility of the dispatcher to gather and relay all of the information needed, but it's the job of the tow truck driver to listen, comprehend, and absorb all of the information instead of taking only one piece at a time like where he needs to go, then relying on the dispatcher to again relay all of the information when he arrives. I'll be right back. I just got to get... I'll be right back. I don't always drink water. It's 
room temperature. Even when he's alone, he's not really alone. Slightly chill. He's the most interesting man in his hotel room. Now that's some good water. A good dispatcher will want things to run smoothly and will do everything possible to ensure that it does. And treating drivers badly will not bring about positive results. They know that happy drivers equal happy customers and will do everything in their power to make it work. I'm sorry, a Mazda 6 Maroon. I'm just going to start over. Thank you for watching the Toe Channel. My name is Don Archer. I'll see you next time.